Major funding and support for this program have been provided by the Wyndham Foundation, Donald Sheila and Mark Albano, Palmetor Realty Group, Mount Snow Limited, Larry and Angela Tolan, Merchants Bank, and Satani Associates. I'm Teddy Spicer and welcome to the Student Network's Vermont Profiles. It was here in the small town of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania in July 1863 that one of the most significant battles of the American Civil War was fought. In three days of fighting, over 51,000 soldiers, both North and South, were killed, wounded, or captured, making it one of the Civil War's bloodiest battles. It was near this spot that several regiments of Vermont soldiers played a significant role in the defeat of the now famous Pickett's Charge. It was the actions and bravery of these Vermont soldiers that helped turn the tide of the battle and the war itself. In this program, follow us as we share the experiences of the 2nd Vermont Brigade on the road to Gettysburg. In the decade preceding the Civil War, growing tension between the northern and southern states threatened to divide the fledgling American democracy. By April 1861, seven southern states had seceded from the Union over issues of states' rights, forming the independent Confederate States of America. In the months that followed, tension between the newly formed Confederacy and the Union heightened. For the South was as committed to secession as the North was to preserving the Union.
At 4.30 a.m. on April 12, 1861, Confederate forces under General Pierre Gustave Toutant Beauregard fired upon Union troops garrisoned at Fort Sumter, South Carolina, signaling the beginning of the War of the Rebellion. After a 33-hour engagement, Union troops under the command of Major Robert Anderson were forced to surrender. The attack on and the defeat of the Federal installation caused the North to rally and a call for action against the rebellion. In the South, the victory bolstered support for secession and soon several other states joined the Confederacy. Over the next few months, both sides built up armies preparing for the final showdown that would settle this matter once and for all. On July 21, 1861, the two armies, a total of over 60,000 soldiers, met about 25 miles southwest of Washington, D.C. at Manassas, Virginia. Both sides expected the conflict would be short. Union generals assumed that they would crush the Confederate Army and the rebellion would be over. The outset of the battle gave Union forces hope of overcoming the rebels. But as victory seemed near, Confederate reinforcements arriving from Harper's Ferry, Virginia, turned the battle into a complete rout. Panicked Union forces and civilians who had come to watch the battle with their picnic baskets scurried back to Washington. By the end of the day, Union forces had suffered nearly 3,000 killed, wounded, or captured. The battle, a great blow to Union morale and confidence, caused many to realize the war would not soon be over. Over the next 12 months, the Confederate and Union forces faced each other time and time again. Despite being outnumbered almost three to one and not having the industrial strength of the North, the Confederate Army, under the command of General Joseph Johnston, inflicted heavy casualties on the Union forces. Because I think the North, Northern soldiers are every bit as good fighting as the Southern ones. And the obvious answer, I think, to everybody is leadership. And when you have good leadership, which the Southern uh, soldiers had, uh, that directed them in the right direction and, and gave them the, some inspiration, they did well. The North, we all know the series of, of inept generals that, that the North had the first part of the war, uh, from, from McDonald to Pope to Burnside to, to, <laughs> to Hooker, it seemed like we went from bad to worse. During the late winter and spring of 1862, General George B. McClellan moved 100,000 Union troops against the Virginia Peninsula. Their objective was to capture the Confederate capital at Richmond in hopes of ending the war. In May, General Johnston attacked Union forces on the outskirts of Richmond, bringing the campaign to a standstill. However, Johnston was seriously wounded and was replaced by General Robert E. Lee, who had been a U.S. Army colonel before the war. Lee, an outstanding soldier, was offered command of the Union Army by President Lincoln at the outbreak of the war. However, he declined. As a native Virginian, he resigned his commission and joined the Confederate Army out of loyalty to his home state. Upon assuming command, Lee unleashed a series of attacks on Union forces, beginning with Beaver Dam Creek, in what became known as the Seven Days Battle. After having sustained heavy losses, McClellan finally stopped the rebel onslaught at Malvern Hill. The Peninsula Campaign was a dismal failure for the Union. My darling wife, I wish the war would end and we could go home. It might be ended by this autumn, but only by an immediate draft of a half million men. Waiting for enlistments will miss campaigns. 300,000 will not be enough raised. In a letter to his wife, Colonel Wheelock Graves Vesey, age 27, a lawyer from Springfield, Vermont, who had been fighting with the 3rd Vermont Regiment, realized that unless drastic measures were taken, the war would be never-ending. President Lincoln also realized the dire situation and in July called for 300,000 troops with three-year enlistments. And a month later, he would call for an additional 300,000 troops with nine-month enlistments. Lincoln needed troops quickly and a lot of them uh, after the fiascos uh, that had gone on in the early part of the war. And 
it would be a lot easier to find people to, to serve for nine months than it would be for three years. That's one reason. The other being that Congress passed a, a militia law, which for, in effect forced, I think it's from 18 to 40 or 45, everybody to register, and they were, um, if they were physically able, uh, were uh, eligible to serve in the military. And so I think a lot of, of men probably opt for that rather than, hey, I can't leave the farm for three years, but maybe I can survive for, for nine months. In August of 1862, Vermont began the process of raising nearly 5,000 of the 300,000 nine-month troops called for. Though their main purpose would be guarding cities and supply routes, their destiny would be to fight in one of the most significant battles of the war.